naturally. To begin his latest search for superior items, Drew is taken to the road. But because tea is unavailable for this journey, he's joined by upholstery restorer and friend for over two decades, Craig Hughes. So tea being off, I thought it'd be the ideal time to bring you out on the road with me. Yay! Driving the van, <laughs> eating chips. It's brilliant, it's good for you. Yeah, That's healthy good. diet. Healthy diet, that healthy right. diet. You're with me now, don't you dare. <laughs> it's curry and cake all the way. Yay! But bringing you along, you'll have to do what tea does, you know. What's that, insult you? Little. Oh. Very, very little. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure I can manage that. Yeah, T has had 40 years practising, <laughs> taking the mick out of me. Now he does it for his living. The boys are travelling over 100 miles to Bakewell in Derbyshire's Peak District, where Drew's arranged a visit to an up-and-coming dealer known for sourcing fine antiques from the UK and beyond. Right, then, you're in for a treat today. We're in Bakewell. Oh. Beautifulness. Lovely. Right? And um, we're off to see a guy called Tebow, and he's a young dealer and he's based in a big old country house and it's outbuildings. He's got a good look, he's got a very good reputation. So he's a new dealer that I've not met, new setup, fresh eyes on the job. So when we get to Bakewell then, are we having a Bakewell pudding or tart? Well, you bet your bottom dollar we are. Hey! I tell you, we're not just having one, we're having as many as we can fit in. Set in almost 4,000 acres of rolling Peak District countryside, for over nine centuries, Haddon Hall, a fortified medieval manor house, has been the beating heart of the vast Haddon estate. In a rented barn on the grounds are three dealers, Daniela Lichters, Gordon Kennedy, and French expat Thibault Bizoul, owner of Kingsbridge Antiques, a purveyor of French and European architectural and decorative items. I just wanted to do something I really liked and I uh, always loved antiques. And I wanted to um, do something in my life that I loved. I love, I would say, decorative antiques with a level of distress uh, to it. So I like the imperfection. Most of the antiques I purchase are sourced in France. Having said that, I also buy in the UK and in other countries in, in Europe. I think it'd be great here uh, to meet Drew and uh, uh, I'd be interested to see what where you can find and where he buys. Hello. How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? You're all right. Drew, how are you doing, mate? All right. Good to meet you, Good Thibault. Good Hi, Craig. Good to meet you, Craig. Hi, cool. Right, so let's Come get on stuck in. in. Yeah? Let's have a look what you got. Looks good. So how have you ended up here then? I'm based in Matlock, just 10 minutes down the road. OK. So, um... That's not a Matlock accent. It is not. No. Uh, <laughs> where where so, have you come from, then? Uh, I was born in, in France, in Nantes, at the end of the Loire Valley. OK. Um, despite the accent, I've been here for 20 years, though, Drew. Really? Yeah, I know. It's not wearing off, is it? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So you've got a real good mix. There's a bit of folk. There's a lot of folky stuff in here. Yes, so we've got uh, Swedish, French. Is this open to the public? It's trade only here. Trade only. Yeah, All yeah, right, okay. yeah. First look into Thibaut's uh, barn here, and it's a really good eclectic mix, very, very different. Um, there's a range of furniture from England, France, Spanish maybe even in there as well. She does all sorts in here. It's a really good mix, and that's what I like. Castis, yeah. Yeah. They're interesting, aren't they? Nice things, yeah, very nice. Do you know any history on them? Yeah, so they're coming from... Um a motoring museum in uh, Scotland. Yeah. The Scottish thing makes sense because some of the largest uh, casting uh, foundries in the world were in Scotland. The first thing I see that I'm definitely, definitely interested in is a pair of cast iron pilasters. Now, these are architectural elements that were made to bolt to the front of a building. Could be interior, could be exterior, either side of a doorway or mirror or window. And these are, I'm not going to say rare, but they're definitely scarce. You know, these are things you're not going to find often. And if you do, you might get one and, you know, and it'll probably have some damage. These are in lovely condition. These iron pilasters are cast in a neoclassical ancient Greek form. They were probably manufactured in one of the many Scottish ironworks, which, during the early Industrial Revolution, were renowned for producing the best iron items when such ornamental sophistication was popular. 
in good condition and a rare pair, the desirable architectural antiques could be worth around £1,200. What are you asking for those then, Tiba? Uh, we've got 600 on the pair. Um, that's not terrible, to be honest with you. Um, can you do five, maybe? Can't do five, but we can meet in the middle if you want. Sold. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm glad you bought them. You need to learn how to load the van, don't you? I know exactly how to load the van. <laughs> and I will sit there watching you load the van. <laughs> 550 for the pair of pilasters, yes. That's great. That's a really good buy. They're worth 1500 to 2000 pounds all day long. Maybe even more. They are a really good architectural element. Really good, dramatic, and very quick to fit. You know, you can use them anywhere. Old man. Grumpy old man. Yeah. Perfect. You like grumpy old yeah. man? What's on when you see? 200 and on that. Yes, that, yeah. that I will. Yeah. That I will. Yeah. Marvellous. Do well. Good. This is good. Good. Why do I buy busts of unattractive older men? It makes me feel better. <laughs> That's all. Because they're uglier than me, that makes me look good in the room. Bosh, everyone's a winner. So what about so your big, your big fat, ugly, ugly bust there? You know, I've got a bit of a thing for big fat blokes. Yeah. Ugly blokes. So this one's plaster, probably. I actually get two twenty on that. It's so, a mes enfant, un mes, mes enfant. enfant. Yeah, so he probably did uh, uh, a couple of them on uh, gift for the, for his kids. So. Uh, ah, so uh, for my children. Yeah, that's right. Was it two hundred? It was two twenty, but it can be two hundred. Okay. I just cannot say no to ugly old bloke busts. I just love them. There's just something about them. And what I like to do is buy as many as I can and then put them in big lines in the shop. I think they look great like that, and they sell better like that too. Can you tell me about these? Yeah, I bought these uh, at an auction some time ago. They've been, um, uh, they've been sitting at home for some, uh, uh, for some time. There were eight of them. Yeah. I could only get my hands on two of them, and they're from Ox Oxfordshire. So they would have been the in, a, in, a, in, a, in a shop yeah. um, to, show, to showcase their skills and, and see what sort of uh, ornament yeah, yeah. they, um, they could make. There was two, uh, let's call them plaster manufacturer casting display boards. They haven't got a great deal of age to them, to be honest with you. They're about 20 or 30 years old, I think, looking at them, if that. Okay? But they look great. Showcasing very fine craftsmanship, this pair of sample boards feature swirling Rococo and neoclassical examples of ornamental plaster castings. While the boards are relatively new, the castings themselves could be much older. Featuring bulls, foxes and other animals, they could be worth around £1,500. Well, what, 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 are you, what are you asking for, them? Um, on these, I've got um, 350 each on these. Do 500 the pair? Can't do 500 on that. Salvage expert Drew Pritchard and furniture restorer Craig Hughes, standing in for regular sidekick T, are hunting for quality items in the Peak District. So you've got a real good mix. There's a bit of folk. There's a lot of folky stuff in here. Where Drew's hoping to buy a pair of plaster casting sample boards. What, 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 are you, what are you asking for, then? Um, on these, I've got um, 350 each on these. Do 500 the pair? I can't do 500 on that. 600? 600. Marvellous. I think they're good, seeing they're very, very decorative. They're very, very yeah. good things, aren't they? We end up buying them both for 600, 300 each. That's a great deal. I could sell them, just flip them quickly and make a couple of hundred quid, but I'd rather just push them to the next level. So what I'm going to do with, to them is just aggrandise them a little bit more. So basically put a nice frame around them, paint the back of them, put some nice hooks on this, and just make them very, very usable for an interior designer. And then I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident they'll double their money. I think a couple of thousand pounds should see those, see those right, if I get it right. Wood. Is it? Yeah. I've quite a few of these over the years. 
They come out of France all the time, like this sacred heart. Yeah. Somebody's had a go at it. Might be worth doing. Mm. Might be worth I taking think it's the a nice thing, off. yeah. yeah. Look at all that. Yeah, yeah the Just greens, that, the reds. Look red. at all those yep. colours there. Yeah, yeah. Wow, why would you take a paintbrush to that? That is stupid. This um, statue has a lot going for it. The height is really good, just under life size, I'd say. Carved in timber, was originally polychromed and gilt decoration to the whole. You can see little bits of it poking through. And then somebody, for some reason that I cannot fathom, has painted it over in horrible white paint. Just don't do it. Just, if you see original decoration, leave it alone. This turn-of-the-20th-century French sacred heart carved wooden Jesus was originally decorated in multicoloured paint, augmented with a shimmering gilt finish. Stripped back to its original hues, the life-sized religious relic could be worth around £1,500. Yeah, so we've got 750 on that. I just don't know, I'm not unsure about the paint, just getting all that. I can get it off, it's just it's a lot of work. 650. Marvelous. Two days' work from Gavin, very gently on certain areas of it. And we could see more of a thousand pound profit in it if we get it right. But it might take more than a couple of days. I always underestimate those things. It's probably going to take more like a week's work. So I'm going to put another few hundred pounds into that thing. Then I'm going to have to see that, that money again. But I think it'll make it much more desirable. OK, right, I think we're done. Van? Yep. You can get everything loaded up. OK. I came out looking for quality, and we got it. Got it in spade loads today. A couple of really good busts. Got those wonderful sample boards. We got the Christ figure. And then we did get those fantastic early 19th century cast iron pilasters, hopefully Scottish. A rare little find, that was. Um, I'd have driven up here for those alone. I think they're great. Ticked every box they did. Bit of neoclassical splendor. Spending time with Drew, on Craig today was, was great. We had a, a lot of fun. We uh, made a few deals on, uh, you know, learned a bit. Uh, we had a great time, really. After a busy day's buying, time to sample a local speciality. Some pudding for you. Ooh, bake well tart. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? It is, it's a big fat one, that. Look at this surroundings as well. It's, like, it's very beautiful. Couldn't be more British, could it? No. No. Absolutely fabulous. Anyway, cheers. Yeah. Yeah, lovely job. Let's get this down. Right, OK.
Um, there's a range of furniture from England, France, Spanish maybe even in there as well. She does all sorts in here. It's a really good mix, and that's what I like. Cast this, yeah. Yeah. They're interesting, aren't they? Nice things, yeah. Very nice. Do you know any history on them? Yeah, so they're coming from um, a motoring museum in uh, Scotland. Yeah. The Scottish thing makes sense because some of the largest uh, casting uh, foundries in the world were in Scotland. The first thing I see that I'm definitely, definitely interested in is a pair of cast iron pilasters. Now, these are architectural elements that were made to bolt to the front of a building. Could be interior, could be exterior, either side of a doorway or mirror or window. And these are, I'm not going to say rare, but they're definitely scarce. You know, these are things you're not going to find often. And if you do, you might get one and, you know, and it'll probably have some damage. These are in lovely condition. These iron pilasters are cast in a neoclassical ancient Greek form. They were probably manufactured in one of the many Scottish ironworks, which, during the early Industrial Revolution, were renowned for producing the best iron items when such ornamental sophistication was popular. In good condition and a rare pair, the desirable architectural antiques could be worth around £1,200. What are you asking for those, then, Steve? Uh, we've got 600 on the pair. Um, that's not terrible, to be honest with you. Um, can you do five, maybe? Can't do five, but we can meet in the middle if you want. Sold. Yeah. Thank you very much.